Hi, I'm in need of some unbiased advice here, please. Other than the conflict at hand, my fiancé and I get along really well, and I'm not questioning his love for me. I'm going to start from the first time I met his female best friend a year ago. He was really nervous introducing us and admitted he was a bit afraid of her reaction or how we'd get along. I didn't think much of it at the time, as we all want our closest people to get along. She was all right that night, polite enough. We were at a bar and everyone was having drinks. By the end, she was a bit tipsy and getting together with some guy, which my then boyfriend didn't seem happy about and kept calling her. I told him to just let her live. Honestly, I just thought it might have been banter, kind of like in a fraternal way. Fast forward to the next meeting a couple of months later. We went to one of his friend's houses, and she was there. My fiancé commented on how it was my birthday soon, and he was taking me to this really nice gastronomical restaurant. That's when things first got weird. She got very upset and shouted at him, You piss me off. You can't do it that day. That's another female friend's birthday, so you have to change your date. In front of everyone, he told me, Sorry, babe, we have to pick another date. I forgot. I didn't protest, and we changed our date. Fast forward to New Year's. He told me he had already promised to spend it with her, and she was quite vulnerable, so I said fine, I would spend it with my parents, and I had my son with me, so I couldn't party hard and didn't want to leave him. Except my parents live in another city, and when the day came, our car died. The battery died, and even with the charger, the car just wouldn't start, so I was stranded and I was very sick. I couldn't stop vomiting and feeling generally unwell. He still left me alone with a child without a car and went to meet her. I almost broke up with him after that, but ended up forgiving him. Now, every meeting we have after that, she's passive aggressive towards me and is overly affectionate and hands on with him. I'm talking lots of couple like selfies, sitting on his lap while embracing his neck, etc. I find it a bit icky, but I let it go. I realize they have a weird connection and he has her on a sort of pedestal. Once, he told me he couldn't tell her how happy he was with me because she wouldn't be happy and it would affect her negatively. He also was once on the phone with her, on loudspeaker, talking about a concert we're supposed to go to in spring, and he told her I was supposed to go with him, but by then, she may not be able to. We're trying to conceive, and so if she can't, he'll take her instead. She asked why, and he said, oh, you know, just by then, things might have changed. I then asked him, why don't you tell her I will hopefully be pregnant by then? His reply was, oh no, I can't tell her that. This is when I started to feel a little off with their friendship. Still, I made every effort to be extra nice to her and try to get to know her. I thought maybe if we get to know each other, things will get better since I get along really well with his other friends. Fast forward to this year and the conflict at hand now. It was his birthday last month. I was organizing it and I thought it was a good opportunity to bond with her, so I asked her if she wanted to help. She said yes and I was happy, thinking things might take a positive turn. On our first meeting, discussing the party and gift, I told her I wanted to give him a ticket to his favorite rapper's concert, but that they're so incredibly hard to get. I asked her if she could help me, or if she heard of a ticket available. Could she let me know, please? I said if you find one, we can even give it as a gift from us. I also told her it's that, or a ticket to the League of Legends finals in London but those are also extremely hard to get. And she even said, oh, I'll get into the waitlist for his geek thing too, just in case. I thought perfect. Now, when it comes to the party, she did nothing other than take credit. And even the only thing she did, a scrapbook, I was the one who suggested she do it. She calls me a few weeks later to discuss the party, however, and the gift. On that call, she tells me the ticket to that concert is impossible to get. I tell her the news I also couldn't get the League of Legends tickets. They sold out in three minutes. So I suggest we all put money together so he can go to a Michelin-starred restaurant, and she agrees. So far, okay, except a few days later, she texts me asking if we're still doing the gift altogether, and a few minutes later sends me a voice message letting me know she found a ticket after all, and she's gifting it to him from her and her two best friends. I was shocked, but his birthday was soon, 
and I didn't want to create conflict, so I just said, great, he'll love that. But I was hurt. Come the party, she didn't even speak to me. He said he noticed that. I had to ask her to come help with the cake, and the only time she spoke was when he was literally in front of us if I needed something, and I said, yeah, take a picture with him for the book. Again, me trying to be nice. She then made a whole scene of giving him the ticket. He was so happy he screamed, etc., and I left to the other side of the room. In the end, I was tired, and the attitude in seeing her all over him got too much for me, and I left the party early. The ticket is for next summer, and they're leaving for the south of France, the girls and him. He told me they're planning the Airbnb, and I said I'd like you to sleep alone. He laughed and proceeded to write in their group chat. Fiancé said I have to sleep alone, ha ha. She replied and deleted her message. I found out about it and I was so hurt by all the passive aggressiveness and her mean high school girl vibe towards me and I snapped. I told him everything and how she dislikes me. The worst is he knows what she and her friends are like and he still couldn't defend me. Everything led me to believe that she was his priority over me. So I kept a lot to myself to not rock the boat. I also found out they're going for five days and not just the weekend as he had told me. So I said I'm coming too. I have never been, so I'll visit with you and you can go to the concert. He told them he was going to get his own place with me and that I was coming. And she made a snarky remark, nice gifting you a ticket to go to the concert with you. And he was kicked out of the group. Now, I snapped. I can't for the life of me understand why him wanting his own room or me coming is such a problem for her. But my biggest problem in all this is him being blind to her attitude towards me and honestly not putting her in her place and having my back. He himself admits they still behave like teenagers and her whole life is gossip, etc. And still. Now, I told him I don't want her in my life anymore and I genuinely can't see myself being married to someone who has a relationship like that with another woman. We have our engagement party coming up, and on one hand, I don't want her there, not even being petty. I just really want to be surrounded by people who love us and are happy for us, but on the other hand, I don't want to hurt his feelings, and her not getting an invite will turn into a whole drama thing where she'll victimize herself. I'm 36, and I'm dumbfounded. I never thought people 25 and up could still behave in such a way. Or maybe I'm just blessed with really healthy grown-up friendships. How do I proceed? He is now telling me beautiful things, all the right things, about how he couldn't see it, he's gonna change and talk to her. However, I know she's going to gaslight him, and I honestly don't know how he'll react when she does right in his face. He also told me maybe she doesn't even realize she's doing it. This woman is Regina George incarnate to a T. It's ridiculous. Sorry this turned out to be more novel-like. If you read it all, thank you. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. I agree with you and I'm honestly mad at myself for not snapping sooner. My biggest concern in all of this is him though. Right now he's saying he'll talk to her and put her in her place from now on, but honestly having witnessed the dynamic between the two, I'm not sure he can. He said he tried calling her she's not been answering, and then texted him. She can't talk because her grandfather is dying right now. He had to then be supportive. I don't doubt her grandfather is dying and it's sad, but the timing of it, he's just going to get sucked right back into it, I'm afraid. Comment two. I cannot believe you are planning to marry this man. He has shown you so much disrespect, allowed others to disrespect you, and you are clearly a second priority to another woman. Why are you okay with this? Why on earth would you tolerate this and marry a person who has been so unbelievably awful to you? These are questions you may need to work out with a therapist. You have very low self-esteem, and if you do not fix that, he will continue to push your boundaries and put you in second place because you are allowing him to. Now for the update. A couple of days after my last post, I decided to bring everything up with my fiancé while we were having dinner at our apartment. I was like, okay, let's have this talk and see if we can figure something out, because this is getting ridiculous. We talked about how the friend's behavior was affecting our relationship and how uncomfortable it made me feel. He agreed that some of the things she did were inappropriate, 
but said he didn't want to cut her out entirely. Like, seriously? I told him how uncomfortable I was with her constant presence in our lives. He suggested we try to set some boundaries instead of excluding her. I reluctantly agreed to give it a shot, hoping that this would finally be over. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. The following weekend, we went to a casual gathering at the friend's house, where there were several other couples. As soon as we got there, it was like a switch flipped. This girl was all over my fiance. I mean, she was sitting so close to him on the couch, I was surprised she didn't try to crawl into his lap. She made several jokes about how they were practically a couple, and honestly, I wanted to just crawl into a hole and disappear. I tried to engage with the other guests, but it felt like I was a ghost or something. At one point, the friend pulled my fiance away for a private conversation in another room. Like, are you kidding me? When they finally came back, she was laughing and playfully nudging him. I couldn't take it anymore, so once we got home, I confronted my fiance about her behavior. He brushed it off, saying it was just harmless fun. I pointed out how she was constantly crossing boundaries, but he just dismissed my concerns, like they didn't even matter. The next day, I found out she posted several photos from the gathering on social media, including one of her and my fiancé looking all cozy. She even had the nerve to respond to my comment about it with a snarky remark about how they were just having fun. This led to a back and forth in the comments, and my fiancé saw it and got annoyed, telling me to just let it go. Later that week, I stumbled upon this group chat with the friend and some other people talking trash about me. My fiancé had no clue about the chat and was upset when I showed it to him. He said he would talk to her about it, but I was like, yeah, good luck with that. The following weekend, I decided to spend some time with my parents to clear my mind. While I was there, my mom asked about the engagement party plans and brought up the friend. I hesitated, but mentioned the tension, which surprised her. She suggested that maybe it would be best to reconsider including the friend in the engagement party. When I got back home, my fiancé mentioned that the friend wanted to come over to discuss things. I was like, oh great, this should be fun. The friend arrived, bringing snacks and acting all cheerful. I could see right through her act though. The conversation quickly turned awkward when she asked why I was upset with her. I tried to explain my feelings, but she interrupted me, making all these excuses about why she did what she did. My fiancé was just sitting there quietly, which was super frustrating for me. After she left, he claimed she didn't mean any harm. He keeps insisting on keeping her around for the sake of their social circle. As the weeks passed, the engagement party planning continued. My fiancé finally revealed that the friend had suggested a big surprise during the party, which he found exciting. I was just like, of course she did. We decided to move forward with the engagement party invite list, leaving her on it, but with serious reservations. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. The engagement party is coming up and I'm just trying to survive until then. Edit. After posting, many asked about my fiance's past with the friend. They met in college and he claims their friendship was never romantic. His friends support her being in our lives, but my family is concerned. I also considered couples therapy but he isn't open to it. He Am I the idiot for recording my mother's hurtful comments about my name change and wearing a shirt with my new name to Easter brunch? I, a 25-year-old female, have always had a different name than my birth name since high school that my friends mostly called me by. This started when I began exploring my gender identity as a teen. I identified as non-binary for a while, but now I'm comfortable as a cisgender female. I was always pushed to be hyper-feminine by my mother, who is 53 years old. I also grew up in a conservative Christian household. Both my first and middle names are after both of my grandmothers, though the story goes that my mom wanted to name me Jessica, but when I was born, my grandmothers were arguing over whose name would be my first name. My mom, tired from giving birth, caved and changed my name at the last minute. It never felt like my name, if that makes sense. And the actual name my mom said she was going to pick is beautiful and unique. So there's a part of me that feels like I was robbed, if that makes any sense. So now I go by Daisy. It's a plant-related hippie type name. 
My mom has heard my friends call me this and always has a negative comment when she hears it. That's such a dumb name. That's not your name, etc. She also has this weird delusion that I hate my grandma, her mom, because I don't talk to her often, even though there is a language barrier between us. My mom never taught me Spanish. Every time I try to get my mom to talk to me in Spanish and learn, it never works out. I've tried to learn on my own, but I lose it because no one speaks Spanish. Plus, my grandma lives far away from us, and we only see her about two to three times a year. I feel like my mom would think I'm an awful person or disrespecting my grandma because I don't want to have that name anymore. It really isn't a family name per se because I'm the first child to have the name. And again, the name was thrust upon me. Plus, I think names are kind of arbitrary, and if an adult wants to change it, then it shouldn't be a big deal. I would most likely keep both grandmother's names as middle names or just get rid of both names entirely. I never ever use my middle name anyway. I've also considered going by the original name my mom chose for me, but she always thought this was a joke or a ridiculous idea. How do I go about doing this besides the legal process? And how do I get my mom on board without her getting super mad? Furthermore, is it disrespectful to change your name if you're named after someone else, even though it wasn't the intended name? To add, hopefully you guys can give some input and if you're a parent, I would like to hear what you think too. Thanks, too long, didn't read. I wanna change my legal name since I do not go by it in most social settings, but I'm named after my grandma and my mom would be offended if I change it. I would like to get her on board, but don't know how. Plus, I don't know if it would be disrespectful to my mom. I have no emotional attachment to the name. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Your mom is being weird, and you also can't change your name without upsetting her. She is creating that situation intentionally because she counts on you trying not to make her upset. You would be neglecting your responsibility to yourself if you let your mom throw a fit and derail something important to you. Comment 2. Focus on expressing to your mom that your name change is about your personal identity and happiness, emphasizing that it is not a rejection of your grandmother's but a choice that reflects who you truly are. Consider having this conversation when you feel calm and prepared for her reaction. Now, for the update. Two weeks after the last post, I decided to bring up my name change during a family dinner. It was my mom's birthday, and my parents hosted it at their house. The table was set with her favorite dishes, including lasagna and garlic bread. I waited until dessert to mention my desire to change my name. As everyone enjoyed cake and coffee, I casually brought it up. My mom immediately frowned and called the idea ridiculous. Things got tense as her reaction became more intense. My mom claimed that changing my name would dishonor our family. My sister Kate chimed in, agreeing with our mom, adding that the name Daisy was special. I felt the tension rise as my brother Jake stayed silent, glancing nervously at his wife Rachel. My mom raised her voice, stating that names are important and connected to heritage. I tried to explain that I had no attachment to my current name. My mom dismissed my reasons, insisting that Daisy was a beautiful name. After dinner, we moved to the living room for gifts. I noticed my mom received a necklace with her birthstone, which she showed off. I left the room briefly to collect my thoughts in the kitchen. While in the kitchen, I overheard my mom telling Kate that she was embarrassed by her daughter. I felt provoked and decided to document the conversation on my phone for proof. I returned to the living room where the atmosphere felt heavy. Jake made a joke to lighten the mood, but it did little to help. I confronted my mom about what I overheard. She denied saying anything hurtful, claiming she was just being protective. I played the recording from my phone, catching her off guard. The room fell silent and everyone stared at her, who looked furious. My mom shouted that I was being disrespectful for recording her. The tension escalated, and Jake awkwardly tried to change the subject. Rachel finally spoke up, supporting my right to express myself. This prompted Kate to defend our mom, creating a divide in the room. The argument reached a peak when Jake asked everyone to calm down. After the confrontation, I decided to take a break from family gatherings. A week later, my mom sent a group text demanding I return for an Easter brunch. 
I decided to attend, but planned to make a statement. At brunch, I wore a shirt with my desired name printed boldly on it. My mom's face turned red upon seeing the shirt, but I didn't back down. The family was stunned into silence, and the brunch felt awkward. I announced that I would be changing my name legally, regardless of anyone's opinion. The brunch ended with my mom storming off, claiming she was ashamed of her daughter. Weeks later, I received a letter from my mom expressing disappointment, but not love. Edit, I want to clarify a few things. Changing my name is not a cultural issue for me. It just doesn't resonate. I also have no intention of changing my middle name. My dad wants to maintain peace and has not supported me directly. My brother-in-law and sister are upset with me, but I'm not backing down. Am I the idiot for letting my parents' opinions poison my relationship and then blaming my boyfriend for wanting to move away? My boyfriend and I have been together for almost a year. We met at a bar almost two years ago and started off as friends and had lots of fun together. We went on a trip and our relationship developed further starting then. The first few months were all good and we even moved in together. It was going well up until a certain point where I started to question our relationship and him as well. That was around the same time my parents began bringing up things about him that they didn't like. My parents didn't like some of the things he would do forgetting to put his chair in place at the table, forgetting his glass of water on the counter, etc. He also had an argument with my mom where he was super respectful and my mom was not really, my mom started feeling resentful towards him from that point and compared him a lot to my ex, who she likes a lot, which is something I do not agree with. I agreed with my boyfriend regarding the argument they had, but I noticed that since then, I felt a lot of resentment towards him as well, which I know is not right. I realized at that point that I tend to be super influenced by my parents' opinions in general and that I'm figuring myself out during this time. It's okay not to agree with them all the time and that I'm my own person. I also realized that I love my parents and would have liked for them to like my boyfriend, but it's my life, therefore my decisions, and I can choose someone for myself. The thing is, since then, I noticed I tend to get super attentive to any little thing my boyfriend would do wrong that I didn't like, and I had trouble choosing my battles. I would fight about stupid things with him. Some of them were fair battles to me, but some I agree weren't. They're things I wouldn't normally bicker about. Along the way, he wasn't helping our arguments, as he wasn't very validating towards my feelings and could be disrespectful, name-calling, raising his voice, sarcasm, I tend to be on the emotional side, and he tends to be more rational. But the invalidation and disrespect did not help my resentment, and I feel he could have developed some towards me as well. I started feeling super insecure about myself and our relationship. He started blaming all of our problems on me, which didn't help my insecurities and resentment. At a certain point, I thought every argument was truly all my fault. I started seeing a therapist a few months ago and she truly helped me build my confidence and be more self-aware. She made me realize I have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, hypersensitivity, and trouble calming my anger. She also helped me identify some childhood traumas that affect the person I am today and that I have a lot to unpack. I got better, but my boyfriend and I still had fights that would escalate for nothing, and we were on the verge of breaking up a few times. We realized that it was all very toxic for both of us, but that we loved each other very much and are willing to try to make it work. He suggested we see a couples therapist, and we have been seeing her for seven to eight sessions, one every two weeks. He realized he also had issues on his end, such as controlling his anger as well and being kinder in his words and the way he talks. He acknowledged that he indeed had a role in our fights escalating. He also wants to start seeing a therapist on his own. The couple's therapist did help with some things, but we still have ups and downs. The thing is, I feel like we both have a lot of resentment and anger built up due to all the fights we had. We love each other very much and we want to make it work, but I find it very hard dealing with my own weaknesses as well as his, and I feel he feels the same way. There was never any cheating on either end. We hurt each other without wanting to and feel drained. Our fun moments are rarer than they were, 
but we still feel the connection and chemistry. I want it to get better, but find it so hard. Is it supposed to be this hard? How long is it fair to fight? How do you get rid of resentment? I truly want honest advice, whether it's in regard to myself or my boyfriend. Now, for a few comments before the update. Who is dating your boyfriend, you or your mother? Now, for the update. Two weeks after my last update, my boyfriend and I decided to have a small dinner at our place to celebrate my birthday. We invited my parents, my brother, and his wife, who just had a baby. I spent the day cooking with my boyfriend, trying to keep things chill while avoiding any talk about our relationship issues. My parents showed up early, bringing a cake and some gifts. One of the gifts was a framed photo of me with my ex from a family vacation. My mom made a comment about how my ex was such a good guy, which made me uncomfortable. Dinner started off well, with everyone chatting and laughing, but there was still some awkwardness. Midway through dinner, my dad asked my boyfriend how he plans to support me with my ADHD. My boyfriend hesitated, leading to an awkward silence as my parents exchanged looks. I quickly jumped in, trying to change the subject to the baby and how cute my brother's kid is. After dinner, my mom pulled me aside to talk about my boyfriend, sharing her worries about his ability to handle our family dynamics. My boyfriend overheard and felt hurt, leading him to confront me about my parents' opinions. In the living room, he accused me of not standing up for him, raising his voice in frustration. I tried to explain that I was caught off guard and didn't want to make things worse in front of my family. The argument got more intense, with him pointing out past times where he felt unsupported. My brother stepped in, suggesting we all take a walk outside to cool off. Outside, it was chilly and the weather added to the mood as my boyfriend continued to express his feelings about the dinner. My dad, feeling uncomfortable, stepped in to calm things down, making a joke about how family dinners are always chaotic. We went back inside, but the mood had changed. My boyfriend was visibly upset and distanced himself from the group. The baby started crying, which provided a temporary distraction for everyone, but the tension was still there. The next morning, my boyfriend was still distant. I found him scrolling through his phone instead of talking to me. We had a quiet breakfast with minimal conversation. He mentioned wanting to have a serious talk later. We spent the day doing chores together, but the atmosphere was filled with unspoken tension. Later, he revealed he'd been offered a job in a different city, which could mean a big change for both of us. The news shocked me. We debated the pros and cons of the move, with him feeling excited and me feeling unsure. He suggested we could try a long distance thing if I needed time to think. The conversation quickly turned heated with me accusing him of running away from our problems. He insisted he was trying to provide better opportunities. We ended the night without a resolution. The next day, he packed a bag saying he needed to clear his head and would be staying at a friend's place for a few days. I felt a mix of relief and anxiety as he left. He returned after a few days, and we agreed to sit down and talk about everything without distractions. Edit. After some time apart, we had a long talk about our relationship and the job offer. He expressed how the dinner and his observations of my family made him question if he truly belonged in my life. I voiced my concerns about the job and the idea of long distance. After discussing our options, we decided to give long distance a try while he took the new job. We felt it was best for both of us to grow individually before making any permanent decisions about our relationship. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.